here I am, guys. Um, uh, I'm with, uh, with Dan, Gareth, and Rich. These guys, we're training them for an awesome expedition. They're doing a, a first and unsupported uh, trip uh, across Iceland. I'm going to let them tell you more about what they're doing, um, and then we'll uh, talk about the, the training they're doing as well. Thanks, Joe. So yeah, what the three of us are going to do in April, May next year is do a south to north unsupported crossing of Iceland. It's going to involve a few disciplines, um, primarily, uh, well, hiking, skiing and pack rafting. We're going to start in the south end and uh, cross a famous lagoon called the, the Jokulsalen and make our way up onto the Vatnajökull Glacier, which is the, uh, um, the largest uh, glacier in Iceland. It takes up about a quarter of the landmass of Iceland. Um, and a lot of volcanic activity. So we'll get up on there and um, start making our way north and uh, I might pass over to Gareth for the next stage. So when we get to the northern part of the Vatnajökull, we're going to find the headwaters of the Skalfandaflot River, um, inflate our pack rafts and then pack raft it down to the, uh, to the sea on the south coast, uh, on the north coast, sorry. Um, and the interesting thing about this expedition is we're going to do it uh, completely unsupported uh, and we'll be the first team to pack raft uh, the, the whole river. Um, so it's going to be a big logistical challenge. Yeah, and I guess just to develop on that logistical challenge a wee bit, it's going to be um, uh, probably the single biggest challenge is, is the amount of gear that we've got to carry with us to be able to cover everything from um, sort of tundra and wastes to to uh, glacier open crevasses um, open ice cap um, and then and pack rafting gear on top of that so trying to work out a way that we can do that all unsupported without caching gear or leaving anything behind so that we arrive three weeks later on the north coast of Iceland with everything that we set off from the south coast of Iceland is uh, it's quite a challenge really and so going into that that's been the the interesting part for us is is that challenge uh you know it is a multidisciplinary expedition there's so many variables so many things uh going on and so well, we've developed uh a program uh specifically for this trip it's been developed by uh my senior coach or one of my senior coaches uh chris woolley uh it's an awesome program i'm gonna let you these guys tell you a little bit more about what's uh, involved with uh, with that as well and how that's working. Yeah, look, it's a pretty tough program, Woolies, but I think that's, that's what we need for this trip. Um, one of the best things about the program, uh, I think for me, is the adaptability and flexibility of it. Um, we're all, like many people, quite busy. We work full time. Um, we're, all, uh, we're all doctors, we're all fathers, uh, and uh, we'd all love to be professional athletes, but unfortunately it doesn't fit into the current life model. So we need a program that's going to uh, prepare us for this trip, but um, which is a big undertaking, but also allow us to fit that in around um, the rest of our lives. And I think uh, what Willie and Joe have put together is really fitting that bill. It's really, um, uh, it's tough, but uh, it's, it's been really well customizable to, to our schedules, which has been fantastic. And I think one of the big things with the program is that um, it's going to give us a huge amount of confidence when we actually get to Iceland that we know physically we're going to be able to do it. So much of this expedition relies on our physical capabilities. Um, and then the other thing is a lot of these sessions are long and they're hard and um, you know they're really endurance based and it really factors into the mental toughness we're going to need to have on the on those long days um, so I think it um, it lines up with what we're what we're doing perfectly um, yeah I, I just I guess to, to reiterate what a what an achievement putting together a training program like that is really something that not only can train us to 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 be fit to do such a wide variety of different disciplines when we're actually out there but also having a program that's flexible enough for us to fit it around our, our otherwise pretty busy lives and having a, a training program that's customized that fits both of those two criteria is, is pretty impressive really so just how many how many kilos are you gonna guys gonna be carrying each on the <coughs> on the pulp it's gonna be roughly it's going to be roughly between 45 and 50 kilos. And for how long, for how many days is that going to be before you're on the river? So it's going to be between seven and 10 days. Yeah. The most challenging part will be going from sea level to about 1500 meters on the Vakniokl 
Uh, that'll take us about three days to get up that first big section. That's going to be the, the challenge. So again, as part of the logistical challenge of the expedition, we're designing foldable sleds that we can so we can drag our gear rather than have yeah. to carry it on our backs. How long, how long is the total? Sorry. No, no, sorry. No, I was just going to say one of the one of the, the trickiest sections is trying to design gear that, as Gareth says, that we can we can, you know, that's that kind of weight to carry on your back on potentially soft snow is just not necessarily very feasible. So hence why we're having to uh, try and drag and, and stuff on sleds. But um, obviously we then got a sled that we need to be able to raft with, so you can't have a big rigid plastic sled. So we're actually having to custom build um, foldable sleds for the trip, um, and then. At the end of the, the ice phase, it's very difficult to predict where the snow lines are going to be and at what point we're going to stop being able to drag and start being able to paddle. And there's going to be a gap of an unknown number of kilometres in between where we've got to carry everything on our backs. So, you know, it gives you some idea of the, of the challenges and the unknowns that we've got to be sort of, we've got to build in and be prepared to, to, to work through. Now, the, uh, are you letting work and family get in the way of my training? <laughs> Of course not, Joe. Of course not. We've got priorities. No. Um, no, family always comes first for all three of us. I think I can safely say that. Um, we've all got young kids. We've all got very supportive partners. And we're very grateful to have, to have families that allow us and help us to do this kind of thing. Um, we've all got full professional lives too. Um, we're all doctors nearing the end of training or some of us have finished training. And um, it's quite hard to find time and energy to do this. Um, especially your programs, Joe, they're tough. <laughs> but but they're, they're, yeah, as I was saying, they're the perfect mix of being tough and preparing us for what we need to do, but also being flexible and adaptable enough to fit them in around everything else. So, um, yeah, striking that balance is really key for us. So we're really grateful. Excellent. Well, thanks, guys. Good luck. And, and hopefully over the, the next few months before the trip, we can have a few more of these and check-ins and uh, see how you're going, you know, back in the, the various parts of the world that you are and go from there. Anyway, awesome. Cheers. Have a great Christmas. Thanks. Thanks.